Charlins, it's me once again, and this one is a video I know that's going to draw some ire, and I know there are going to be some MRA. Look at the title of this video and go, oh my god, we're going to subscribe to her because she hates feminism. No. You'll be highly disappointed if you actually think that. I don't actually. What I don't... What's kind of bothering me now is the rise of radical feminism. I don't have nothing against... I am myself a feminist. I consider myself one. But as of late, there seems to be a problem with it. Not feminism itself. It's the members. I want people to know that. Feminism is fine. The ideal that women should be treated equally in society and have equal opportunity, that's great. It's some of the members, and believe me, it's a growing number and it's getting kind of worrying. Okay, this is from the WWEEK, excuse me, dot com. The white feminist, racist, you know, um, Let's talk about Sylvia Plath's recovery, uh, recovered feminist novel, The Bell Jar, this week, shall we? Over the years, I've lost count of how many times someone has insisted I read it. So last year, I finally decided to give it a go. And in in the book, she actually talks about The Bell Jar was published, and it's a story about a young writer named Esther Greenwood who spends a month in New York City working as a paid intern for a woman's magazine. In spite of this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, complete with room and board, Esther is unable to enjoy herself, and she needs the program in disappointment. She returns home to discover she was rejected from a writing program she had been anticipating and is forced to spend the summer at home with her mother. After not sleeping for a few weeks in a failed suicide attempt, Esther is admitted to a private mental hospital, uh, health hospital, which is paid for by a rich eccentric woman who is funding Esther's education and writing career. And as with Esther on her way to an interview where she'll find out if she's fit to return to school. There are many parallels between Esther Greenwood and Sylvia Plath, and the book draws on a number of Plath's own experiences with struggling writing career and mental health issues. It's an interesting enough piece of fiction, but in the online discussions I've read, very little has been said about Plath's use of some seriously racist stereotypes that occur throughout the novel. And there's more than just a few examples. In one part, Esther Greenwood describes her reflection as big, smudgy-eyed Chinese woman uh, staring idi uh, blah, blah, idiotically into my face. In another, she calls indigenous Mexicans ugly and says things like dusky and bleached blonde uh, negress. Gross, and not very feminist if you ask me. Okay, I'm not going to read the whole thing because that would take too long, but you know, it, it points out that, believe me, when you... You know, talk to a lot of feminists now. You're going to find that some of them have a very racist attitude. A very discriminatory attitude to trans women. And sometimes I think this, uh, some feminists now, it's not about women empowerment. It's more about hating men, which is misandry. If you're just to the point where... You know, you belittle everything. Like, there are issues that men go through, and they really do. Now, we can blame that on patriarchy, which is fine, because it does set up a lot of problems for men. But there are men who are screaming to the top of their lungs, like, hey, I have problems, I want to talk about it, I get raped by women. You know, I, and one, one disgusting scene I saw from the show Family Guy, which I personally like the show, is when Peter told... Lois, he was raped, and her immediate reaction was to laugh. Do you see how wrong that is? But yet there are, you know, that that's how society has it to where that it is the fault of patriarchy, that if a man is, you know, gets raped by a little woman, then he's looked at as inferior. But some women don't even seem to think that matters, and they don't. I'm going to put links below. This is downright disturbing. It's not feminism. If you, if you get to the point where you belittle men, hate them and everything, what it is is misandry. Misandry is a hatred for men, just like misogyny is discrimination against women. Stop calling yourself a feminist. 
Like, I think the word radical feminist needs, needs to go away and needs to be replaced with misandrist, because that's what you are. Radical ideologies are just not good. Swerf, sex worker, exclusive radical feminist, is not good. TARF, transgender, exclusive radical feminist, is not good. And I don't want to hear it's a slur. Swerf and TARF are. No, they're descriptive terms about you and your bigoted views. You want to know why a lot of people have a negative view on, on feminism? Lady Gaga is the perfect example. And I don't know, maybe she's changed her mind, maybe she has embraced feminism and stuff, which would be great. But I remember when somebody asked her a question, and I'll put it, the link below. She said, when somebody said, are you a feminist? She said, oh, hell no, I love men. And this is coming from Lady Gaga. And this wasn't a very old interview. This was back in 2012, I think, or 2013, just six, five or six years ago. Why would somebody who has openly said, I want to fight for women's rights and stuff, yet when somebody calls her a feminist, she recoils? Katy Perry recoiled. You know, people are like, oh, they're just big celebrities. And I'm like, well, Lady Gaga does a lot of activism, though. That's kind of the different thing. She really cares about minorities and stuff, and yet she was afraid of being called a feminist. Something's going on there. And people are like, oh, it's just the media uh, painting feminists in a bad light. Yeah, okay, I agree. Yeah, they, they do generalize, and, you know, they do make, they try to paint like all feminists are bad, which is ridiculous. Most feminists are awesome, but there is that group that is starting to get louder and bigger. And they are starting to really make feminism look bad. And we need to nip it in the bud. Because if we want women and men and everybody to take feminism serious, we need to deal with our own, do some, our own house cleaning. Not just sit here and go, oh, well, there's nothing wrong with our group. There's something wrong with yours. Uh, sorry, that's not how it works. If we're feminists, we're supposed to take care of the problems in our own backyard. That's how it works. We stand up and say, no, you swerf and turf, get out of here. You women who don't take men's issues, you know, like uh, men being raped and stuff, you don't take men being raped and stuff serious, get out of here. That's how you deal with this problem. You don't sweep it under the rug, or you don't not talk about it. This is how Christianity got so messed up, because... These radical evangelicals were rising in the ranks, and yet Christian churches and everything wanted to ignore it. Like, nope, nothing wrong, everything's fine. Turned out, it wasn't fine. If we want feminism to get its name back, and for people not to take wackos on the internet like Paul Elam and Sargard of Ackhart or whatever the heck these lunatics names are. I mean, if we don't want people to take these people serious, we have to do our own house cleaning. We have to say, enough is enough. We're going to be for equality for women, absolutely. But hey, if a guy says I'm raped, I'm not going to laugh at him. I'm going to take him serious. Because if we don't, then one day feminism may sadly be a footnote in history.